Welcome into another edition of The Current Report, our weekly roundup of what's happening in the world of digital media. I'm your host, Chris Brooklier. The advertising, media, and tech world descended on Las Vegas last week for the annual pilgrimage to CES, the Consumer Electronics Show. And AI once again stole the spotlight, dominating conversations, but that wasn't the only talker. Disney had a much bigger presence as it hunts for more streaming ad dollars, and they weren't alone, as Netflix, Paramount, and NBC Universal courted advertisers for their own ad-supported operations. Now to get a better lowdown on all this, plus more, we're going to go straight to the source. So I'm going to kick it to Eilis Liffering. Thanks, Chris. I'm here at CES with Anthony Katzer, CEO of IAB Tech Lab. Thank you, Anthony, for joining me. You're welcome. Pleased to be here. So what would you say are the major like advertising tech trends you're seeing this year at CES? The major topics that are being talked about are AI and AI's influence on the industry. Uh, streaming has a massive presence this year, which I don't think has surprised anyone given, given the ongoing explosive growth and transition from linear to streaming environments. Identity is at the forefront of conversations this year. Cookie deprecation is a big theme this year. Lots of conversations, and those, those go hand in glove. I know I've heard just AI like nonstop. Do you feel like it's a bit of an overload or... I know some people seem like a little disappointed that there aren't even more like case study type location yet and like learnings that are being revealed. We tend to be a shiny penny industry, Mm -hmm. but I don't think AI is necessarily overblown because it does have an opportunity to transform this industry in a lot of ways. Everything from media investment and planning to privacy. I think there's very potentially positive privacy implications around AI in terms of how we maintain an addressable ecosystem, dynamic creative, op- like true dynamic creative optimization. So I don't think it's overblown based on the impact it could have on the industry. I just, one could say it's overblown given where we are, but if we're not going to talk about it now, when are we going to talk about it? And I think CES is an appropriate venue to have those discussions. And obviously just last week, going back to cookies really fast, Google just kick-started the demise of cookies. And obviously brands and agencies have known about this for a long time now. But where do you feel like they are in adopting like new identities and maybe other tech like AI that can help them? I think they're behind the curve. I, I think I don't think brands have necessarily paid... Um, cookie deprecation and the privacy sandbox enough attention. I think I think they're behind the curve and and maybe relying a bit too much on the rest of the industry to figure it out. Um, the industry will figure it out, but I think brands need to brands need to be at the table front and center, working with the ecosystem to understand the impact cookie deprecation is going to have on their ability to reach their consumers, mm-hmm. optimize their reach and yield curves against their advertising budgets. So I think I think brands need to come to the table more. So I don't think they're involved enough, and I don't think I don't think they appreciate the impact it's going to have on their on the efficacy of their ad dollars uh, moving forward. So, how do you feel about AI in like media buying and planning, maybe taking some much needed jobs at this time in the industry? Look, I think anytime there's been any sort of technical innovation. Um, in an industry, you know, whether it was the you know the invent the invention of the the cotton gin or the automobile, anytime there's technological innovation in an industry, um, it has been proven throughout history to actually create jobs. Um, there's there is always going to be a turbulent period in time that's transitional, where it could be disruptive to the workforce, but ultimately the cycle typically ends. Uh, with new job opportunities that are created. So do I think there's some disruption to the agency models through automation and AI AI engine automation? Sure. Do I think that we end the cycle three, five, seven, ten years out where it ultimately creates a lot of new opportunities um, on the buy side of our industry, whether it be agencies or even DSPs? Yeah, I think ultimately there's upside. Very okay, cool. Now we talked about how streaming like has a huge presence this year. Is there anything in particular between, like, whether it's Netflix or Disney that I guess you're more excited about? No, I, I, I think I'm more excited about the, the discussions around convergence between linear and streaming, mm. uh, which I think is going to be a necessary, necessary event in the industry. 
you know, let's not forget Linear is still a $60 billion plus ecosystem in the United States. Depending on what research you read, it's roughly double that globally. So it's about a $120 billion industry across the globe. The conversations I've been having at CES have really been around convergence between streaming and linear. What about when it comes to like ad formats? Do you think that like these types of new ad formats will even push like subscribers to sign up for the ad tier? I don't think subscribers are going to sign up to a particular streamer for their ad format, so they're going to sign up for their content. Mm -hmm. However, um, I think there, there has been a lot of discussion as well about different ad formats, different metrics around streaming advertising. And I think they can create a more interesting, perhaps even interactive experience through more innovative ad formats. There has been a lot of discussion in the past, just two days alone on new ad formats and new metrics, attention, emotion, um, uh, uh, you know, psychographic data on the consumer, like where are they mentally as they're watching that content. And I think this, I think the ability to make more ad formats interactive has definitely been a topic of conversation here. <laughs> One last question for you. Do you believe there's any like themes or even companies that are like missing this year out of CES? Retail media mm -hmm. seems to be somewhat muted at CES, mm. at least from my perspective. Mm -hmm. I haven't really, there's been some conversations around the edges, Yeah. but at Cannes, it was retail media oh, yeah. were front center. In yes. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And maybe that's just because retail media and CES, there's not really, a, you know, an organic yeah. Kind of interconnect there. Yeah. We're, we're streaming. You know, you know, all your major television manufacturers are here with their devices. Yeah. That seems to be more of an organic fit. But yeah, retail media seems to be muted. That's yeah. Fantastic. Even though Walmart is a big sponsor, this they, are a big, they are a big and, sponsor. But just yeah. walking the floor and just yeah, informal totally. conversations and meetings, I just I haven't seen that really be at the forefront mm -hmm. of conversations. Mm -hmm. So I'd say I that's another muted, yeah. muted area. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Anthony. It was great to talk to you. And back to you, Chris. Thanks, Eilis. Next, we're going to pivot to another marketer on the forefront of innovation. We're talking with Amal Weishampayan, the chief product officer at Full Throttle. Full Throttle is a company that works with brands and agencies to shore up their first party data strategies. Amal, how you doing? Good. Thanks for having me, Chris. So we're fresh into 2024 now, but I want to take a look back at last year for a minute. So as we look at the data privacy and identity landscapes, what stood out to you in 2023? So even though there's been so many really neat and unique innovations around cookie-less uh, IDs and you know how CTV can be more data informed, um, they typically only uh, work for you know more quote unquote Fortune 500 companies. So I think there's this there's this big kind of almost missing story around well what happens to all of these advertisers that in aggregate represent so much advertising spend and they're still subject to the same kind of seismic, you know, ad tech fracking, if that's the right word, where you have, you know, these deconstructed cookies, you have mobile ad IDs that are being obfuscated, you have all these long tail publishers, right, that aren't like these huge publishers, but they still represent um, so much traffic and so much viewership and, and um, you know, real, real users. And that, that, those, those changes, including identity fragmentation, right, affects everyone equally. Yet I think that's been the group that is probably they have the least amount of solutions. And if we zoom out and go a little bit more big picture, I feel like CTV is in a really interesting spot as part of the this whole discourse. So to you, how does CTV play in everything around cookies deprecating and what's its role really? In terms of cookie-less identity, um, it, it depends, right? Uh, I think it's subject to the same overall identity framework, right? So while a cookie itself may not be the mechanism of delivery for a CTV campaign, um, a lot of the ad tech world still operates on cookie syncs, right? So if you are using an identity layer um, as part of your CTV activation, um, then cookies still end up being a factor there. So I, I do think you're gonna end up seeing, while it may seem that those two are not intrinsically related, I think you'll end up seeing that it still fragments identity as, as there are just less signals. Okay, so we started the conversation looking back at 2023. Now I'd love to get your thoughts on what do you think the big focus is going to be this year when we talk about CTV and data privacy? I think CTV wise, uh, you know, everyone talks about AI, right? I think there's, a, there's certainly the current AI obsession 
Um, and I don't think it's a fad. I think it's it's very real, right? And there will be a ton of applications built on top of specifically generative AI, right? With generative AI, how will it help change what happens in the space of CTV? One is AI specifically for CTV is going to help translate human desire and a marketer's desire into an actual plan, into a marketing plan, right? Based on all the data that's available in CTV networks and CTV vendors, where you can say, I want to do X, Y, Z, you know, I'm Mitsubishi, I want to sell these many cars, I want to use this kind of messaging. And at the speed of retail, which you don't often find, but at the speed of retail, you're going to see AI translate that human desire, right, or that marketer's desire into a first draft plan of saying, okay, well, here's the whole plan based on all the data around identity, based on what we activated, based on measurement inputs of what actually worked, right? Once you have the attribution, um, the AI is going to give you amazing planning capabilities specific to CTV. Okay, it'll be really interesting to see the practical uses of AI as we go further into this year. Thanks, Amal, for joining me. It was great talking with you, and uh, have a good one. Yeah, you too, Chris. Thanks so much. We're going to end this episode with our new segment, One Last Thing. And today we're dropping this stat, which comes from Insider Intelligence. What streaming service is forecasted to have the highest percentage of U.S. viewers on an ad plan? If you guess Peacock, you're right. It comes in at a projected 78%, just in front of Paramount Plus at 73%, and Hulu at 68%. Now, all three of these streaming services have parent companies with decades in ad sales experience, so it's not too much of a surprise that they're strong with their ad plans. Netflix comes in at 7%, but that number is expected to double by 2027, showing the streaming giant's potential market for growth. And of course, we know that Netflix's ad plan is only about a year old. And that's it for this edition of The Current Report. For a deeper dive on all these stories, plus more, check out thecurrent.com. And of course, please like and subscribe on YouTube, plus leave us a review on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen. And if you want to hear more from The Current, listen to The Current Podcast, where we interview some of marketing's biggest leaders about their keystone career moments and where the industry is going next. We'll see you next week.